How you doing folks? Welcome to another video. Now, regular viewers of the channel will know that I'm going over to Everest Base Camp. I'm actually going this Friday. It's Monday at the minute, so I'm just doing my packing. And I thought some of you might be interested in seeing what I'm uh, bringing with me. So basically, <laughs> here it all is. So yeah, um, I suppose we should go through it and tell you what I'm bringing. I, I'm trying to keep it quite minimal. It doesn't look very minimal the way it's lined out, laid, laid out at the minute. But yeah, in terms of clothing and stuff, I'm hoping to, you know, do a bit of washing while I'm on the, on the trail. So, I mean, if you were going to bring a fresh pair of underwear for every day, you'd be talking like 14 pairs. So like nobody's doing that. So obviously you're going to have to be washing at some point anyway. So I thought if you're going to be washing anyway, may as well only bring, you know, three or four pairs of under underwear. So that's what I've done. But anyway, let's start. Uh, yeah, let's start with the clothes. So uh, there's the trousers that I uh, normally, you normally always see me in which are my uh, Fal Raven hiking trousers. I wasn't sure whether to just bring them, but you never know what might happen so far. It's probably a good idea to, to have a spare set. So uh, I've got my Caramore lighter weight ones as well. And then over this side, we've got uh, my T-shirt sort of, uh, what do you call it? That technical fabric stuff. So uh, there's two short sleeve ones here. Uh, one of them is my one from Abby Barnes' channel, Stay Wild, and that one's Forest Green Rovers, who are a vegan football team. So them are my two uh, t-shirt base layers, but I've also got uh, proper thermal ones as well. Uh, what brand is that? Trojan, that one is. So they're like uh, long johns and a long sleeve thermal layer as well. So what I'd normally wear when I'm over here is uh, those trousers, one of those layers, and the hiking shirt there, which is an old North Face one. It's still going strong. So that's probably what I'll do over at base camp as well, on a trek up to base camp. And I'll carry the spare one in my day sack, just in case, you know, you need to change during the day if you get overly sweaty or whatever. So underwear and, and socks... These are the ones I've worn for ages and they're my Bridgedale socks and Bridgedale liners. I always wear a liner sock as well as my main hiking socks. It reduces your chance of getting a blister and I haven't had a blister in years from doing that. Uh, so I also ordered a couple of extra pairs but they're not Bridgedale. These ones are, are bamboo hiking socks. So I thought I'd give them a try. And I've also got some sock shop bamboo thin ones as well now they weren't advertised as sock liners but they are very thin so i thought the combination of, of the bamboo line and the bamboo sock meant to be antibacterial and wicking and stuff like that as as i'm sure some of you know i'm a vegan so wool a merino wool isn't an option for me we'll not get into the politics of veganism here though so but anyway regardless to say yeah, I avoid wool products. So yeah, going with the bamboo liner and the bamboo sock, see how we get on with them. As I say, I'm going to wash them all anyway. And then three pairs of, uh, of Kex as well. So uh, yeah, as you can see, you fit more in your bag if you, if, if you roll up your uh, your socks and your, and your shirts and stuff. So uh, that'll keep it fairly compact. So that's my main bits of clothes. And then uh, as we get colder, as we get further up the trail, we've got um, uh, a fleece gilet, is that what you call them? So sleeveless uh, thing. Uh, as you can see, I'm not a, I'm not a brand snob, <laughs> so I'll wear whatever. And uh, people who know me will know that I'm very uh, keen on uh, found clothes and... <laughs> you know, used clothes. So I couldn't even tell you where I got this, but yeah, uh, we get a thing, I wear that quite often. This is another, you'll notice these are quite bobbly because the, the the years old at this stuff. This one is a North Face, uh, it's even got a bit of paint on the sleeve there. That's a North Face top, but it's quite a good wicking fabric, that one. So that's quite, even though it looks really old and battered, it still, still does the job. So that's my long sleeved, uh, layer if I need it but in addition to that once we get even colder 
That's my my uh, my new rain jacket, my Rab Arc Eco rain jacket. And then this is a. I don't really wear this that often. I just keep it in the bag inside a stuff sack when I'm on most of my walks. So you might have seen me in this occasionally. This isn't remotely a fancy brand. This is another found item. This was on, on uh, Rosie's uh, coat rack. And we can't work out who who used to own it. It's a size small, but it fits me fine. And it's Peacocks. So, like, yeah, not remotely a brand. But, yeah, it, I've worn this a few times. And I don't know what the difference between that and a £280 <laughs> Uh, Patagonia jacket I'm sure there's plenty of differences you'll you'll tell me but yeah it's kept me warm and it's lightweight and yeah it does the job so yeah I'm not going to spend any more money and this one is what I quite often would wear uh, when I'm out and about as well and this was a present of my daughter and her partner and as I said not a, not remotely a brand snob this is Trespass as well and that's a sleeveless one. The sleeveless stuff I find uh, quite handy because, you know, it's easier to, it seems easier to regulate, oops, falling over here, to regulate your, your body temperature with the sleeveless stuff. So, uh, yeah, I've always found it, found it handy to, to do that. But anyway, so where are we up to? We've done those clothes. So, yeah, uh, other bits and pieces of clothes. So I'm, I'm actually waiting on one more piece of, of kit and that's... Um, some Rab glove liners because I reckon most of the time I'll just be wearing them but when it starts to get a bit colder we've got these outdoor uh, research ones that I wear in bad bad weather so they're good chunky gloves my mountain equipment cap you see me wearing quite often uh, I have been always tempted to get more mountain equipment gear because they are um, a local firm well local to where I grew up in Glossop that's where mountain equipment was was formed and I believe my, my brother used to go out with the owner's daughter years ago when we were teenagers. There you go, there's a bit of gossip for you. And uh, yeah, so I'll be wearing that. And uh, usually that cap as well, which will go either with that one or this hat here, which is another found item. I found that on a walk. That's hat number five that I've found over the years. And I thought that goes quite well with the color of my new uh, Rab coat. So there you go. And uh, finally with the clothes, uh, we've got snuds coming from um, from Wild Mountain NI, the group we're going with. They We've got snuds through them, the thinner ones. But this is my nice chunky uh, thick one. This is really good for you know, colder weather. So I'll be wearing that a lot of the time. Plus my 3FL poncho and 3FL rain kilt. So if you haven't heard of 3FL, they're a company uh, from China and they do ultralight gear. Same sort of, you know, fabrics that you'd use on some of the more expensive companies, for, but for a fraction of the price. You have to wait a month for it to come because it's coming through AliExpress. But yeah, uh, I've, I always have them in my pack. And then in terms of footwear, my big chunky Salomon boots that I've had for years with some new insoles in and these Brooks trainers that I got the other week. Oh, and <laughs> these ones for wearing around camp as well. Some thermal slippers. You can pay 60 quid for rab ones, but these are um, Lakeland something or other and they were only about 15 quid. So yeah, as I said, fraction of the price. You don't have to buy brands all the time. Right, what next? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, just a quick look at my my sleeping bag. Not the lightest one on the market, but uh, we were told minus 20 degrees for our sleeping bags. And that's a Snug Pack, which is a, a Yorkshire company. So uh, good to support a Yorkshire company. And uh, yeah, that's uh, comfort rating is minus 20. Extreme rating goes up to minus 30, I think it said. So yeah, that's definitely going to keep me warm. Yeah, but as I said, not the lightest uh, sleeping bag. So I'll only be using that in cold weather. So that's my uh, clothing. Uh, oh yeah, may as well get onto these while we're here. Six juggling balls. Now, as you can have you seen on my videos in the mornings, I can only juggle five balls. But I thought a couple of people will probably want to learn how to juggle while we're up there on our rest days. So I thought I'll bring two complete sets so I can teach other people how to juggle if they want to. That's a card game called Jungle Speed. If you've not heard of Jungle Speed, it's a great 
Uh, snap with bells on, I call it. Yeah, it's like a, a version of Snap, but it's a, yeah, a lot more interested and fun to play. So those are things to keep us entertained. Uh, let's move on to uh, what next? Oh yeah, my wash bag probably. So um, yeah, we'll go along the line here. So yeah, trying to keep this fairly minimal as well. So I have a friend who was on the trail recently and he says, yes, definitely bring a baby wipe. So I thought a small pack would probably do me. That's 64, even if I allow myself two or three a day, that'd be enough. So for the times when it's not convenient to, to get a shower or whatever. Um, but as well as that, obviously I've still got my um, travel soap and a uh, call them face cloth in there. So yeah. And thanks to Harvey for one of his poo bags. Yeah, it's not used. <laughs> Don't worry <laughs> for keeping that in. Now, the, the travel soap I've got in there is great because not only can you use it to wash with, you can also use it for washing your clothes and everything. So I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. And uh, a wee tip as well for washing your clothes. A lot of people I've seen use these stuff sacks. So give your stuff a bit of a, a wash in the stuff sack and bash it about and it does the job. Apparently, we'll see whenever we get there. So also inside my uh, wash bag, toothbrush, bamboo toothbrush, cut a bit short, save a bit of weight, uh, mini toothpaste, mini sun cream and lip balm. And I don't, I never wear deodorant. I, now, I don't smell, honestly, you know, but I, I just don't find the need. I don't sweat that much. That's what Prince Andrew said, wasn't it? But no, I generally, like, I don't sweat a lot. But uh, yeah, if you're washing every day, I, I generally don't find the need. But I've got Rosie when we first started going out about 10 years ago, bought me a, an aftershave set for Christmas called Original Gangster, so which I always thought was quite funny. But yeah, that's a tiny mini uh, bottle of aftershave that came with it. So if anything starts to smell, a quick ch -ch of that will do the job. Then the uh, medicine cabinet. So in addition to the altitude uh, tablets, I do take a regular, um, oh, what, do you call, what do you call them? It's a vegan equivalent of fish oil, basically, and some vegan supplements. And as well as that, paracetamol, uh, ibuprofen, and uh, the altitude sickness tablets, uh, vertigo tablets, only a couple. Uh, very occasionally, I would get vertigo. I had it a couple of years ago. But I know what sort of triggers it. If I, you know, if I go upside down, you know, last time it was triggered by me leaning out of the bed head first to grab my phone from under the bed and st stupid things like that can trigger it. So, yeah, as long as I don't hang myself upside down, I can generally avoid getting vertigo. And I've also got a couple of diazepam in there. You know, I've had a bad back a couple of times in my life and the only thing that has touched it is the diazepam. So I always manage to keep a spare whenever I've gone through it and uh, so there from the last time I had it so they're probably a couple of years old but hopefully they still work <coughs> now this blue stuff I've got a couple of plasters the blister plasters but this stuff I got a big roll of kinesiology tape don't be spending a fortune on it you can get a roll for a fiver but <coughs> it's not for kinesiology purposes which is uh, scientifically dubious as far as I'm concerned uh, you know the, the benefits aren't proven but the tape is good for stopping you getting blisters. You can get blister prevention tape and they charge a fortune for it, but it's basically the same thing as kinesiology tape. And I got a massive row of it for a fiver, which will last me years. I've had one previously, but I couldn't find it. So I've just cut that down into, into strips. So I'll, I'll probably put that on at the start of the walk around the bits that are prone to blisters and it sort of reduces your, your chance of getting them, along with my double socking of my inner sock and my outer sock. That should stop me getting any blisters. But you never know, but we'll uh, hopefully anyway. Uh, so that's all going inside the wash bag there. Now, I was experimenting and trying to keep the weight down. Initially, I thought, oh, Chinese uh, takeout containers are lighter than my wash bag. But when you weighed three of them together, which was what it was taking to fit all this stuff in, the, the wash bag actually ended up lighter. So I thought, no, stick to the, stick to the wash bag. I've got a couple of bags of uh, things for the trail. So just uh, Lidl's own brand uh, fruit and nut bars and these cis uh, isotonic gels. So yeah, 
so that'll keep as the, as the weeks go on you know the weight will diminish when I, when I get through these uh, so water now I do have a pouch for my uh, backpack but uh, there's a couple of people have recommended you know using uh, water filtration so that didn't really work with the pouch because the one I ended up going for was this one it's a straw so I'm gonna have to you know suck put that in there and suck my water through I need another one of these containers as well now the, the main brand that people go for I think is a soya squeeze but after doing a ton of research on this, I found a site uh, selling these ones and the guy reviewing it did a really detailed review of all the different options and he wasn't impressed at all with the Soyo Micro Squeeze. He says yeah, this one was better. Now it's a Survivor filter. I can't remember the actual brand unless that's the name of it. But yeah, basically you stick this in your water and, and drink it through there and it just sucks it up through the bottom there and this apparently does 99.999 percent of uh of nasty bugs got rid of whereas the others aren't quite as as good as that and it's half the price of the soya micro squeeze as well so far no i'll go with what this fella says and, and use that so there we go that's that bit now last bit is uh the uh all the vlogging stuff <laughs> so probably a ton of weight here so uh, sunglasses actually as well, I've broken these, so they still fit. I've been looking for the bit that broke off so I can try and glue them, but I couldn't find it. So I might treat myself to a new pair of sunglasses when we're in Kathmandu. Charger, adapter, uh, light for vlogging, which uh, sometimes, as you'll have seen on my video for a couple of weeks ago, when I shone the torch in my face, it was too bright, but this one you can adjust the, uh, the lights when I'm doing any late night filming. Uh, head torch, uh, spare wee torch, that's quite a wee handy one. Uh, GoPro batteries and a wee pouch that keeps them from getting uh, too cold when I'm on the trail. Charger for the GoPro batteries so I don't have to keep on undoing the GoPro to charge the batteries. Phone, uh, charging cables and for the phone as well. Phone. Uh, AirPods, and these are just a spare memory disc. You never know if something might fail. So far, I'll bring a spare memory disc. It's just inside that bigger one, just to keep it from getting bashed about. That's the to go on the the walking pole, and that is a memory card and an adapter for the phone, which means I can take the video and the photos off that and stick them onto the memory card, which uh, will be a good backup because you never know what's going to happen to your phone. So I'm going to try and back up every day or every couple of days. A couple of, um, obviously I can't show you the, the tripod and, I, and, and GoPro because I'm using it at the minute. But uh, if all fails with the GoPro and that has a catastrophic uh, failure, I can start using my phone to record some of the vlogs. So that's the, an adapter with the GoPro adapter for, for the phone, should I need it. My windbreak for the GoPro as well and the... And the cover for the GoPro that uh, Rosie made me out of an old glove, which will stop it getting too cold because uh, the batteries die in no time when there's uh, when you're in colder temperatures. So that'll keep from the batteries from, from dying too quickly. Two uh, power banks. That's a new one. That's a Belkin one. I charged my phone on that one last night and it was super fast it in about 20 minutes. So, yeah, it was a bit more expensive. That was 50 quid for 20 uh, is it milliamps or whatever you call it and that's 20 as well or maybe more but yeah that one's been playing up a bit so I thought I'll bring a spare plus I treated myself to this because it was going to cost about uh, six dollars a day or something to use electric in the tea houses when when you added all that together and I'm probably going to be more needing to charge stuff more than most people what with all the camera gear and stuff I thought I'd go for this so here's a wee clip of me uh, using it on the van last night and it really does do the job any reviews I've seen online yeah so it, it, it definitely was worth the money it was 80 quid that but uh, hopefully it's going to do the job for me when we're over there a couple of pouches for keeping all the electric uh, gear in and that's up, was pretty much it uh, a journal treat myself to a, a journal there that yellow journal to keep a note of uh, 
everything that happens when we're over there. And then finally, just some of the bags that we're going to shove all this into. So that's what I'll keep my phone and the spare batteries in when we're on the trail. Three stuff sacks of the clothes, um, the stuff that goes in my day pack, like the spare shirt and stuff, and that puffy jacket will go in that in my day sack, which is this, the Osprey Talon 22 that I've had for ages, and I find a great wee sack, and I've shown you this before as well, that's my new lecky uh, walking pole as a camera attachment. So that's pretty much uh, all my gear there that I'm bringing. I'm going to bring a couple of extra changes of the clothes for uh, the first day we're in Kathmandu and then we get back to Kathmandu. So a couple of changes of clothes for then as well, which can just go in the main. Uh, hold all this bag I'm bringing, so everything's going in that blue bag there. So I'll bring a couple of extra changes of clothes, but this here is, is what's going to, to the, the trek. So there you go, I'll maybe uh, weigh it and put what my final weight is and I, I feel, I'm pretty much sure I, I weighed it the other day and it was only about 12 kilograms and I think our limit was 15 kilograms so I'm way under the limit anyway. So yeah, that's all my stuff. So there's going to be a couple of videos uh, up while I'm away that I've recorded over the last couple of weeks so you'll not be abandoned for a whole month without, <laughs> without a video so they'll be up uh, next week. And the week after so i should be back you know towards the end of april and then hopefully get some evident everest footage up sometime in may hopefully depending on how long it takes me to edit it so hopefully you found that useful if you're gonna go and do the everest base camp trek yourself so yeah looking forward to it this friday not long to wait now so if you haven't done already give us a wee subscribe and a thumbs up uh, wish me luck and i'll see you when i get back cheers bye <laughs>